Good morning and welcome to Newburgh United Methodist Church on this Sunday, January the 24th. We're still in the season of Epiphany and we are thrilled to have each and every one of you with us this morning. Uh, even though we are worshiping online only, we are thinking and praying for you throughout the week and we want you to know that this is a special time because you are with us. Uh, this morning, uh, as you prepare to worship, I want to remind you that if you have a candle nearby uh, to symbolize the presence of God's Spirit in your uh, home or wherever you are worshiping this morning, we invite you to get that candle and, and light it uh, at this time as we have the candles lighted on our altar this morning. Uh, and during the service, to be reminded that you are with us throughout this experience. It's a great day. Uh, uh, the Sabbath is a wonderful time, and Sunday is a great experience to pause, to remember that God is with us. So I hope you feel that this morning, and that you know that this time is one to celebrate what God is doing in our lives. Well, we go right into prayer at the beginning of our worship services these days. And this past week, as other weeks, we've had plenty to pray about. We want to remind you that during this past week, this last Wednesday, a new president was inaugurated. And we should pray for our new administration as we had prayed for the last administration. And I have to, I have to admit something to you. I, I watched the inauguration uh, this week, and, and it was an emotional experience for me. You may think it was emotional because... Uh, this is a candidate that, that I experienced that I was in favor of, so on and so forth. It's really not that. It was a moment of, of watching this incredible experience of people coming together, period. And, and no violence. And the prayers and the poems and the words that were lifted up were all about unity, and I have to admit, there's always that interesting experience, isn't there? As you watch this patriotic moment, and yet laced throughout that patriotism is prayer to Almighty God, our hymns to God's glory, and our moments where we reach out across the aisles and welcome one another. So for me, it was a powerful experience. We need to continue to pray for this pandemic Please be mindful of the over 400,000 lives that have died due to COVID. And if you did not catch it on the news or on the internet, please take time to find a picture of the 400 luminaries that go along the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C. Every one of those representing thousands of lives. What's on your heart this morning? What's on your mind this morning? Who are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? During this time, we invite you to be in an attitude of prayer, get in a comfortable position so that you might relax and be in prayer. As always, I invite you to share your prayers on Facebook, as so many of you do every Sunday. You're welcome to text me directly, and as you've discovered when the service is over, I will text you in regards to those prayers. Uh, my cell phone number, again, is 812 677 0285. Don't hesitate to use it. 812-677-0285. And I look forward to your prayer request. Well, uh, without any more lingering, let us go to God in prayer. As Hoffa plays, count your blessings, and may this be a time of blessing for us all.
Thank you for that, Hoffa. Appreciate that this morning. And we're glad again this morning to have Pastor Suzanne with us. Uh, she always has unique things to share with family and children, and I mean that as a compliment. Uh, <laughs> glad to have you this morning, Suzanne. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. Good. Um, I have a question for you, and that okay. question is, if you could have any superpower in, that's available, what would you choose? It, it's a no-brainer for me. That power easy. To, uh, power to fly. I want to fly. Why do you want to fly? Because when I have the power to fly, I, I can get anywhere. So if someone, as a superhero, right, I can get to that person. I, I get those places. Um, I, as, as I fly, I, I can drop down rose petals. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can give things to people. You know, I have this incredible experience of doing those things. The only thing that's, that scares me a little bit about flying is that I might get shot by a hunter, so I need to figure that aspect out. But the idea of flying, oh, yes, I'd love flying. Well, I would love for you all to answer that question at home huh? this week, yeah. whatever your fa what your superpower would be if you could choose. Mine would also be flying because I have family who live far away, and I would love to just be able to go for a weekend and see them, ah. and that would be an incredible now, gift. Now, see, you just pointed out a marked difference here, right? You're <laughs> you want thinking, to save the no, world, and I want to see no, my family. No, not even I that. Mean, you want to see know. your family. I just want to fly. <laughs> I, I don't care about the family. I just want to fly. <laughs> You're more considerate than I am. Oh. No offense to any family watching. If I could fly, I would come see you. <laughs> well, I want to share with the children and adults that we all were given a superpower by God. Ah. And that superpower, I'm going to call it, and it's not original to me. I read it in a book. It's called Our Chooser, Our Magnificent Chooser. Mm -hmm. And here's what that means. Our Magnificent Chooser is our superpower because we have the ability to choose every day all kinds of things. Right. We can choose to be kind. We can choose to be honest. Or we could choose to be dishonest or unkind. Every day we have this incredible superpower that allows us to choose how we behave. And God gave it to us. God didn't make us puppets. Mm. He gave us this thing we call it free will, our ability to choose, our magnificent chooser. And so this week, I want you to remember that you carry a superpower with you. And that superpower is your ability to choose, to choose kindness, to choose honesty, to choose friendship, to choose all of the good things that God gave us. And I do want to remind you that sometimes we choose the not nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we still have a choice after that not nice thing to make it right. And so I want you to remember that you can always make it right by going and being honest, by saying you're sorry, any of those things, those are also a choice. So you have a superpower that God gave you. It's your magnificent chooser, and I hope you use it well this week. Let's pray together. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And making us so special. And making us so special. Thank you. Thank you. For our magnificent chooser. For our magnificent chooser. Help us. Help us. To use it well. To use it well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm going to add to, to this this week. Last week, um, there were those of you that did take me up on what animal sound I could do, and you got to hear it if you took me up on it. This week, I'd be very interested in you texting to me or Pastor Suzanne what superpowers you think we either need or what superpowers you think would work the best for us. I'd love to hear what superpowers you think would work the best for us, and I'll look forward to that. And uh, we'll see how many of those we get and see how many we can develop, you know, over time as far as that goes. Well, we come to our point of action. There are lots of ways to be actively involved in the ministry of this congregation, even during a pandemic. And so uh, I want to lift those up for you today. Uh, the first one I, I want to be sure and remind you of uh, is that there are ways to give to the ministry of this church, and those gifts go to promote the ministry, not only in this building, which is very little right now, but outside and beyond, such as our food pantry, our clothes closet, uh, being able to minister to people in need of assistance. Our assistance fund grew quite a bit because of your generosity. 
So this morning, if you would like to give a tangible financial gift, please know that you can give it by texting 669, excuse me, back up, I've said it too many times, 77677 to Newburgh United Methodist Church. Let me say that again, 77977 to Newburgh United Methodist Church. Uh, in addition to that, we would love uh, to receive your prayer request anytime throughout the service or the week. Uh, and your service to us may take a wonderful turn. Uh, I want to share with you that in these next weeks, as I mentioned before, during this time where we are not having much activity in the building, I want to offer the opportunity. Normally, we try and do what we call spring cleaning. Well, right now, we need to do pandemic cleaning. What I simply mean by that is during these down times, I'm looking for those people that will come in groups of just twos and threes, come to the church, and we have lots of areas where we just need to clean things out. There are some things, many things just need to be put away. Many things need to be thrown out. And please don't worry, we're not going to throw out uh, just anything at a whim. But there are plenty of things that are obvious. And we need to do some of that. We're also going to be doing some painting. Uh, the staff has lined up these very simple projects. My pet project is to clean out the shelter house during this time. So if you're interested in being able to help us, uh, let us know, and we will pick an evening, afternoon, or day when it's uh, workable for your schedule and invite you in to help us in these different areas. That's another way that you can take action, and so we invite you to do that. Uh, another thing that we're involved in right now, too, is what we're referring to as pandemic pals. We know there are plenty of folks that are more isolated, don't have a lot of contact, certainly have family, but you don't get to talk to many people, so on and so forth. So please know that one of the things that we're going to be launching in the next couple of weeks uh, are those that are going to be pandemic pals to those folks that are not able to get out as much. So uh, we're excited about that. You'll hear more about that, but we're very pleased that that's going and underway. Those are ways that you can take action. Well, as we come to the scripture tonight, uh, our theme is doing the right thing, having the courage to do the right thing. And that goes into what Pastor Suzanne said, our, our real superpower is choice. And so choosing to do the right thing. And we're using tonight the passage from the book of Jonah. And many of you may be familiar with Jonah and very specific aspects of the story involving water and involving a whale or a large fish. Tonight we just want to focus on chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 and verse 10 where we come to the culmination of Jonah when he finally decides to follow directions. Here's what it says. The Lord's word came to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and declare against it the proclamation that I am commanding you. And Jonah got up and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's word. Now, Nineveh was indeed an enormous city, a three days walk across. Think about that size. Jonah started into the city walking one day, and he cried out, Just 40 days more, and Nineveh will be overthrown, he said to the crowd. And the people of Nineveh believed God. Let me say that again. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on mourning clothes from the greatest of them to the least of them. And God saw what they were doing, that they had ceased their evil behavior. So God stopped planning to destroy them, and He didn't do it. May we listen to God's Word and be blessed in the reading of God's Word. Well, we're so thankful uh, to have our band with us tonight. We welcome back John and Paul, and uh, we've had a time where we had to take a hiatus from the full band, and now Paul is back with us at school, and John is able to be here. Uh, they're going to play our special music today for us. It's, it's titled Fearless. And when you think about doing the right thing, when you think about following directions, uh, one of the things that prevents us is fear. God makes us fearless. There's no turning back There's no turning back Oh 
in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? 
maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Now, you boys and girls that are listening today, and all you adults for that matter, most of you, you hear the, you hear the word Jonah, and you think about fish swallowing a person named Jonah, throwing him back up on the beach, and the miracle of that moment. Well, it is a miracle. I mean, to be swallowed by, by a giant sea creature and, and discover during that time that you need to think seriously about your spiritual walk. And that is an important part of the story. So as we look at it tonight, and you will discover that it truly is a story of following directions. Following directions can be challenging, and it is always a choice, as Pastor Suzanne said. A couple examples. You know, I waited a long time uh, to be a father and, and to have the experience of, of dad. And when Tiffany, my daughter, was very young, she just had her first birthday, I was thrilled to go and purchase something I had to put together. For me, that was a rite of passage. Uh, to be able to put something together. So I, I, we went out and we, we looked for an appropriate gift uh, for her and we got a Winnie the Pooh car. Now, don't get excited. It didn't, you know, it doesn't run on battery or gas or anything. We're talking a plastic car with plastic wheels and it had its own little steering wheel. But because she was so little, it had this handle on the back so that what you would do is take her on these little trips in her poo car and you'd stand behind it and you would move her along. And of course, all in the car were, were characters from Winnie the Pooh. Well, I was really excited a- until I, I got it out of the box <laughs> and I read the directions. Now, this is a real important moment for me because I had to follow the directions. And, and I wanted to prove myself, nobody else, nobody else was going to trying to get me to, I want to prove to myself this, this dad component, that there was dad DNA in me and I could do this. Well, I got it done. A lot of sweat, frustration, and, and, and good that I was probably alone for most of the time I was putting it together. But I knew that when I, because I'd followed the directions, on the next day when my daughter was able to get into it, we were able to push her down the sidewalk for the first time, I had some confidence because I had followed those directions. Well, early on in my life, when I was in high school, I made a different choice. Uh, I was given the honorary title, if you will, of pep band director. Uh, When I was a senior in high school, I got to direct the pep band in all of the games, and I had a ball with it. I played trombone, but that was not my greatest gift. (laughs) My greatest gift was directing the pep band and, and being a part of it. So there was a pep rally one day during school. I went to Carmel High School, so say what you will. And at Carmel High School, we had big pep rallies, and we as a pep band got to play at the rally, and then the band director gave me some very clear directions. They called me Duke. They seldom called me Craig. I think it's because it was easier when I got in trouble to say Duke. Uh, He said, Duke, I want you, you guys can can play, the pep band can play uh, on your way back to the band room. And he looks me in the eye, and he says, don't go anywhere else. <laughs> well, I made a choice. <laughs> and that choice was is that we hadn't played enough. They had just added on a whole new wing at Carmel High School. And so if you can imagine this scene, there are about 15 to 20 of us in the pep band. And imagine us sneaking across from the main building, across the courtyard, and into the two-story business building where there at the time were typing classes as well as some computer courses. And we began playing all of the pep band songs throughout the entire hall. We were having a great time, and the youth and the students were having a great time. Most of the teachers, but there was one teacher that was not so thrilled. And so when she was out in the hallway and, and sharing with me her, uh, shall we say, unhappiness, we decided to go back to the main building. We knew we were going to be in trouble, but we wanted to really delay that. At Carmel High School, they had a planetarium. So the entire pet band went into the planetarium, sat in our seats around, great acoustics in there, and we began to play music. And as we played music, the teacher in charge of the planetarium put the stars up on the sky and we were able to look at the planets and the stars. We were having a wonderful time. Until in a planetarium that's just so dark, a little door opens. And there stood the dean of students. We recognized him by the shape of his head. We'd seen it many times. The entire pet band got quiet. 
and we heard the dean of students say, everyone else back to class, Duke, in my office. And in that moment, the pep band being so supportive as they were, began to play taps for me <laughs> as they left the planetarium. Well, suffice to say, I got in a little bit of trouble over that experience, but it's because I chose not to follow the directions that were given to me by a very competent teacher and band director. Well, let's talk about Jonah and his, shall we say, dilemma. A dilemma is a choice between two things that you really don't like either one of them. So Jonah was called by God, and we talked about calling last week. Remember, God calls all of us. Jonah was called by God to do one thing, to go to this humongous city called Nineveh, which was known for its uh, wickedness, to use the biblical words, its sinfulness. Let's just say it was a, a lousy part of town, the whole city. He was called to go there to, to be among the people, to stand up among them and say, stop what you're doing or God is going to wipe you out. Jonah had a choice and he thought about it a very short time. He had a choice to follow or to flee. He chose to flee. And that's where the story that so many of you are familiar with, pick it up, he runs away, he ends up on a ship, there's a storm. Um, the storm comes up suddenly, and, and as the superstition was from those on the ship, they knew someone must have caused this. Jonah shows himself who is hiding on the ship. They throw him overboard. He gets swallowed by the whale and the miracle. Or was that the miracle? Jonah has another choice. God says, Jonah, a second time, which is where we picked up the story today. I need you still to go to Nineveh to tell those same people to stop what they're doing so that they will not be destroyed. Jonah thought about it again, and he chose in that moment to follow. Now, there are some other choices going on in his head and in his heart that you may or may not be aware of. He had to choose whether to hate or to love the wicked people that he was to speak to. He had a choice to judge or a choice to love unconditionally those people that he was going to speak to. And he had a choice to accept or to reject God's decision once Jonah chose to follow directions. He goes into the city, and you just heard, he cries out to the people, Stop doing what you're doing or you'll be destroyed. And this incredible thing happened that blew Jonah away. They listened. Have you ever had one of those moments uh, where, you're, where you're working with, pick your age group. It can be little children, it can be teenagers, it can be senior citizens. When you have that moment when it seems like no one is listening to you at all. That happens to me a great deal. I can remember being on a particular retreat one time, and, and we were having all the kids, it was a fall retreat, and all the kids were getting ready to carve pumpkins, and we had enough counselors, but in that moment, in this large space, all the counselors were in different places, kind of talking to each other and having a good time, and I'm standing in front of all these kids, we're about to get ready to use sharp instruments to carve pumpkins, I'm like, hello, is anybody listening? Well, that's where Jonah was, he wondered, and he was skeptical whether they would, there's a faith piece to this story, isn't there? He does what he's told. He follows directions. He cries out. And the people, as I said, listened. They immediately put on what would be called sackcloth. You may think of it as burlap. But it was a, it was a, a ragged material. They, they threw dirt and ash on themselves. They literally got down on the ground. And they asked God to forgive them for what they had been doing. And God did. Let me say that again. They got down and they asked God to forgive them for what they've been doing, and God did. God always does. Let's pause for a moment. You need to know, if you don't hear anything else today, that when you go to God and ask God to help you, when you ask God to forgive you, when you ask God to show His love to you, God always does. God always forgives. Mind-blowing, isn't it? So Jonah finds this a very unique experience. Because even though they fell down and asked God's forgiveness, he didn't think God would forgive them. Remember he had a choice to judge or love unconditionally? 
So beyond the waves, there's a, a plant involved because Jonah goes up on the hill and he is excited to see God zap these folks. We're kind of like that, we humans. I mean, let's face, let's be honest. When, when someone does something to us or someone we love, someone we care about, some experience we care about, and they do something that we are not happy about, we want to zap them. Use whatever term you want to, but we want to get even. That's within our human nature. That's what Jonah wanted. He thought, we got a whole city here that are doing all these awful things. All I did was tell them, and they get off that easy. Let's pause. Do we believe that people get off easy when God forgives them? Do we honestly think that, that people that, that live a very challenging life and have been unfulfilled, have low self-esteem, have challenges, have, have hurts, have scars, have addiction, on and on, that that moment that they ask God for forgiveness, we really believe that, that that is going to make their past life better. No, no, no. It makes their present and future better. And unfortunately, most of us do not forget the things we have done wrong, even though God forgives so Jonah gets up and boy, he gets into the, we would say the balcony if there was one it's time and he, he gets his seat, the best seat in the house. He's up on the hill and he is ready to see fire and brimstone. He is ready to see explosions. He is ready to see these people zapped and he's excited about it. He's sitting on the hill, he's waiting. Nothing happens. No vengeance. No judgment. Only forgiveness. So he does what many of us do. He pouted. And he sat on the hillside and it was hot. And so in the heat of the day, God provided a plant. This is all in the story. It's only four chapters. You really need to read it. It's great stuff. This plant comes up and it shades him. And he's like, whoa, this is good. You know what it's like on a hot day down in southern Indiana? You find shade and the humidity and you're like, whoa, it's 10 degrees cooler here. He's having a great time. But then as he falls asleep in the shade, God destroys the plant. And Jonah is getting hot and dehydrated. And he says, I wish I would die. He felt so terrible. Here's God's response. And this is what we need to remember. God says, you know what, Jonah? You were so pumped up to see me destroy all those people. Men, women, children, families. People that really did care about each other, even though they were doing a lot of bad things. You were so excited. And so when I give you this plant, and all that did was provide shade for you, when that plant disappeared, you were angry. You were mad just because you lost your shade. So Jonah, tell me. As angry as you are that just a simple plant died, do you understand who I am? And that I hold my anger when people seek my forgiveness. Well, finally, what directions are we to follow as followers of God? There's three. And I believe that if we follow these directions, you won't end up with a, a final product of, of a car you can put your child in and push down the sidewalk. But you will end up on a path that will be more fruitful than maybe some of the paths that we've been on. So there are only three. Love God, Love neighbor. And treat others as you would have them treat you with an added piece to that from Jesus. Treat others as Christ would treat them. Let me say those again. Love God. Love your neighbor. And treat others as Christ would treat them. It really is that simple. And God calls upon us to follow those, to love one another. And the scriptures are filled with these same three experiences. And Jesus exemplifies these experiences by continuing to love God even when he's dying. To continue to love neighbors even when they're crucifying him. To continue to love neighbors even when they're committing heinous experiences of human rights. God continues to love and that love permeates through Jesus and he exemplifies that. And he says, go and do likewise. His last thing to the disciples was the command. Love each other. <laughs> now I know I, I may make it sound too simplistic, but believe me, 
That is what it's about. That's what the ministry of this entire church is about. That's what this faith community is about. That is what my, my nuts and bolts and core within me is all about. Loving God, loving neighbor, and treating others as Christ would. Some days it's really hard. If I get the loving God down some days, I have real trouble loving neighbors that are doing stuff to other people or each other that to me is just huh, unthinkable. Or I get down the part of love neighbor, but I've neglected God. Or, or I finally get the part where I, I'm really understanding how to treat others like Christ, but then I neglect, and on and on and on. My point is simply this. I keep the directions nearby. I write them down. I have them on my refrigerator. Or I get out my Bible, and I'm reminded. We come back to these again and again and again. Love God, love neighbor, treat others as Christ would. And that's all it takes. And that is, yet, that takes all of that. So this morning I invite you to attempt to follow those directions. Let's talk about our points of connections for this week, which um, summarize these pieces. And again, these will be uh, popping up on Facebook, and I'll be popping up uh, probably right now, as a matter of fact. These four things. One, try and follow, try following directions for anything this week. So you can, you can get something and have to get the direction to put it together, get directions on how to fix something, get directions on where to go. Just follow directions for anything and see how that goes for you. Secondly, I want you to contemplate, are you following or fleeing? Are you following or fleeing? And what is it that you've chosen to flee from if it's not God? Thirdly, pick three days in a row. You ready for this? Here's a challenge. Pick three days in a row to live God's directions. Yep. Three days in a row when I want you to really work hard and commit to loving God, loving neighbor, and treating others like Christ. Boys and girls, that means your brothers and sisters. It means your parents. It means your friends. And finally, pray for courage to do the right thing. Pray for courage to do the right thing. And the reason that I pray for courage to do the right thing is because sometimes, many times, I don't know what the right thing is to do. So this week, I, I invite you to follow God's directions and to go with God's love and presence today. So may you experience the peace of Christ wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness, protect you in the storm, May He bring you home rejoicing at the wonders that God shows you. May He bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great week. God bless.